Are you tired of overcomplicated birria recipes on YouTube? Is waiting for the weekend to go to your favorite birria restaurant an annoying feat? Have you ever said, oh, there's no way I can make my own delicious birria tacos? Well, I'm here to tell you that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And I present to you the easiest birria taco ever. Is beer a taco ever? No way! stories whenever I make this and I always get a ton of messages like Karani can you please show us how you make it please show us a recipe make a YouTube video of it and I've been I've been slacking off this has happened for like six months that I have not made a video but today's the day I feel like I finally mastered the recipe and cooking also, video yes and also this is in my opinion a super easy recipe compared to all the other ones I've seen on YouTube Enrique and I even agree. Like we've had the elaborate ones with all the chilies and everything. We really can't taste a difference. Right, Enrique? Yeah, no, I agree. It's, yeah. So this is, this is a world-class birria right it here. It literally tastes like the ones you have at a restaurant or in the weekend in some little cart. And I'm not just saying that because she's my wife. I legit <laughs> think they, so. Yeah, and it takes not even that much time. It's so easy that all you're gonna need is everything we see here. So you just need garlic, your chipotle peppers, tomato, onion, salt, pepper, um, chicken bouillon, and some oregano. That's literally- Wait, What is that? Oh! I think <laughs> that's main, kind of important. The main ingredient, you need chuck roast. So it's very important that you get the chuck roast. Well, I guess you could use other ones, but that's the one that I've found. Just stick to that one. the most tender meat. Like it's so, it's good. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start with our first step, which is the sauce. So easy. So I have how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, six garlic cloves. I'm just gonna put those in the blender. Um, if you don't like garlic, you can do less, but I recommend putting a good amount of garlic in there. Me and too. then the tomatoes, we're literally just gonna cut them so they blend better. You don't even have to measure, you don't have to roast them or anything. You're just cutting and placing. And as you see, I have two different tomatoes because you do not have to be particular about your tomatoes. You can just use whatever you have. Heirloom tomatoes. The, is this a heirloom tomato? No, it's not. Oh, kind of looks Beef like it. Beef steak tomatoes. Beef steak. Roma. Roma, cherry tomatoes. I mean, Maybe not cherry. Mar well, Cherries you know, it might sweet. change the flavor in a good way. But like I'm saying, you can just use whatever the heck you got. And then one, we do one whole onion. Because most people, whenever they do beta tacos, they will literally put the whole onion just whole, right? But I feel like if you blend it, it's gonna be more flavors, and then you don't have like little random pieces of onion all over your birria. So I just blend it in there. I don't see the point of placing the whole onion, right? Because you're not even gonna eat it. And this way you actually eat it. And then the thing that gives it th that like special flavor is chipotle. Yes, La Costeña Chipotle. You can use any brand though. Uh, yeah, this is just always the brand that I've used. These are really spicy, you guys. Um, so I usually do half a can, just because we have Victoria, so we don't want it to be too spicy, because she does love her birre tacos. Okay. So just put about a half a can in there. Half a can? Yeah, maybe we'll do a little more, because she's been really good about spice. You could add the whole can, you guys. You know, add a little bit more, a little bit less. Exactly, this is just like the essence, the basics. And then we add some water in there. Filtered water, preferably, or some kind of non-sink water. Alkaline water? Yeah, and I'm sorry, you guys, I don't measure. 
Actually, I can give you the exact measurements because this thing has measurements. About there. Yeah, but that's not, yeah, that's that's good measure. <laughs> How much water? And then we're gonna do consomme de pollo. But I know you guys that probably sounds really weird because we're having it with beef and you're putting chicken in there, like beef and chicken. What? It just works. Trust me. I'm gonna add about for all that beef, probably like this. That's a teaspoon, right? It's like a heaping tablespoon. <laughs> Heap it. Heap. That's it. Oh wait, the oregano. Hmm. And also just kind of say oregano and then you're done. Oregano. You can say oregano. <laughs> That's funny. Oregano. And then we're going to blend that. And that is basically our sauce, you guys. Oh wait, a little bit of oil. It's just, like I say, I make this just so quick. It's very basic. I don't know. Okay. I Add some oil of your choice. We got olive oil. You can use canola, whatever. There's so many oils nowadays. Um, and then we blend it. Okay, guys. Now that we got our sauce, we are gonna go ahead and go to our crock pot. So for this recipe, you're gonna need a crock pot. This one looks very busted and old. We've had it about seven years. It has flavor. It, it's yeah, got a character. It, it does, it does. <laughs> so if you don't have a crock pot, I don't know what to tell you. Go and buy one, they're super cheap. They're like $40. Anyway, you're gonna need a crock pot and we're gonna select low for seven hours. Seven hours. But sometimes it's ready at six hours. It always depends. Just to seven. It, around seven hours. Put seven and check it at six. Exactly, that's usually what I do. Um, okay, so now we're gonna take our meat. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. That's a big piece of meat, guys. Okay, so you could just put it all in there whole, but just cut it into pieces. I recommend cutting into four pieces because then it's gonna absorb flavors in different sections better. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're probably gonna cringe when I cut this. I'm just gonna cut it into... Just don't cut your fingers. Uh, just... you oh wait! There's a trick, you guys, so this doesn't move. Oh yeah, it is moving a lot. It, it moves a lot. So you just take a rag. We're gonna wet the rag. Wet it. It's a nice wet rag. That's a wet war. <laughs> Uh, Enrique with the dad jokes in the background. I love it. And then you put your cutting board on top of the wet rag so that it sticks. And look at you guys, it doesn't move. <gasps> it's, like it's, magic. Magic. it's magic. It's magic. Okay, okay yeah. just a little tip. Because you probably, you, oh. yeah, you probably want to do that when you're going to deal with a big piece of meat like this. Oh, okay. Like I said, you guys, I'm not a professional butcher, but. Bad boy or girl. I don't know what you work out, but. You can tell by the color of the, see, let me see. If it has <laughs> one line here, yeah, it was a boy. It was a boy? Yeah. Okay, let's cut this bad boy into, uh, you know what, I'm even gonna cut, these are just such big pieces, I'm gonna cut it into another segment. You can just bullshit this, honestly. Wow. You don't need to be perfect. That, That's... that should say bullshit is beer <laughs> taco ever instead of easiest. No, when you guys taste this, you're gonna be like, what the hell? Why was I struggling my whole life adding all these peppers, searing my meat first before broiling, boiling it? I don't even know, you guys. There's a lot of steps for beer tacos and this is just so easy. I'm done. Okay, we got our meat. Okay. Oh wait. I'm just gonna season a little bit. <laughs> Not even anything fancy. It's just, I don't even know if this does much of a difference, but we're gonna do it. You guys have been saying you want my beer tacos. This is my beer tacos. So. Okay. Take it or leave Take it. Take it or leave it. it. Anyways, let's put the meat in the heat. Ooh. Right just now? Just slab those on there. And now we do our sauce. If you want raw beer tacos, you're basically done. Okay, then we take our magic sauce. Simply place it over your meat. And also you could strain this 
a sauce was smoother, but I like. No, don't strain. Yeah, we like all this in here. Do a little too. Ooh. Just make sure it's all coated. That sound though. That sound. That's a good sound. Looks a little weird, you guys. I know. I know. But you need to wait till that you see the final I result. Wait for six and a half hours now. Oh wait, six hours and fifty-five minutes, and this will be looking soupy, delicious. This meat is gonna release all its fats, and it's just gonna be. Oh. Is it like, is it A like symphony that? of flavors. It's so good, you guys. Nice. Nice. <laughs> all right. That was basically but. it for right now. Um, I guess I will see you guys in six hours and how many minutes now? Oh, six hours and 55 minutes so that we can complete these birria is now ready. Do you guys want to see what it looks like? <gasps> Ooh. Oh my god. Damn. I'm hungry. It's already 10th. I know. That took forever. We, we started a little late. Late dinner. Okay. I want you guys to just appreciate this. Look at it. Look at the consomme. I was telling Enrique, like, I had told you guys to strain it. Then I realized, don't strain it, you guys. There's no point because Look at how it ends up. It still ends up like a broth consistency. You, there's no need to strain it because then you're just gonna lose oh, the flavors. Even it, it's even better. And I also forgot, you guys, to say, add two bay leaves. I added two bay leaves in here. Bay leaf. Coronary has a topping already, which is just a green salsa, mm -hmm. recipe pending. Mm -hmm. Limes, onion, cilantro. These are essential yes. for a yes. quesadilla taco. Yes. If you don't have these, they're just gonna taste. Might as well, might as well go to Taco the, Bell, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. You, you need, need that. that. You need that. That is what's gonna complete. Elevate it. the flavor from mm -hmm. one, ten to mm -hmm. one million. It's not even kidding, you guys. Yep. It really does. Yep. It's very important. Okay, so now all we gotta do oh, is no. prepare so them. Prepare our tacos, if you will. So. What we're gonna do, we got this nice and hot. I'm gonna put, actually I'm gonna use this oil. I'm just gonna put some of that juice in there so we can get those tacos to look red. Yeah. Sizzle effect. Enrique is gonna prepare them for you because he said I was using the wrong tools. Yeah, so. she was like, you have this one with that perfectly goes in and flips. She was using a freaking spoon, dude. Seriously. I get shy in the camera, okay? Uh, I don't. <laughs> All right, so this is how I'm making them right now. I just basically make a quesadilla, quesadilla. Sorry, but I let the cheese kind of get on the outside so it can melt on the outside that's how you get that crust that and what's the crust. purpose just the crust? it's you know crispy cheese is really good and that's how it looks more birria ish so then you got your melted <laughs> cheese and you just put your um insides in there your insides okay put all your carne onion your cilantro and we're just gonna repeat that till we fill all our tacos which i have two more to fill everything we say she already ate two of them <laughs> she's asking for more but it's literally almost 11. So. Mm. i'm not gonna come to wait <laughs> so 
So we got our consomme right here. And I forgot to mention, in the consomme, you add the onion and cilantro on top, and it just makes it more like a soup, you know? Lovely. And then it starts getting meat chunks in there whenever you dip it. So at the end, when you're done eating these, it's like a beef stew. Second place. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. When you're eating them, put the lime and put a fresh pinch of salt in there. I don't know what it is, but even Ramsey said it. Like adding salt at the end, it just adds a little something, something. Salt. It adds salt. It just enhances the flavor to another level. It makes all the difference adding that pinch of salt. So, you guys, try this recipe. Let us know how it went for you. Mm -hmm. I hope you like it. We love it. We make this at least once a month, at least. Oh my god. So that's going this recipe. We're sharing it with the world. Yeah, it's really easy. Even a caveman can do it. If they have a crock pot. If you guys make it, remember to tag me on Instagram because I want to see. I want to see your guys' creations. And I will be real brothers or siblings if you're a woman. <laughs> All right. I think that's, that's our I call. think the gimbal's tired. It's had a rough day today. So, if, for those who don't know, a gimbal is our tripod. Mmm. That one's so meh. Yummy, you guys. Okay, you guys, the gimbal is done for the day. That was it for us. That's it. We're gonna have our 11. 11, 11! I wish this video gets a million views. A million? <laughs> a million people eating birria? <laughs> gonna be a lot I of wish, cows being killed. I wish you all love this recipe. That's my wish. Like, share, comment. Thank you. Besitos. You heard her. You heard her. Like, comment, subscribe, share, and all of the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Follow good us stuff. on Instagram and make this delicious recipe. Bye. Bye. Question number one, go. Are you tired of overcooking? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Damn it! Okay, Take two. Are you tired of overcomplicated beer recipes on YouTube? I only point with one finger, right? Yeah, but then you still like that. Ready? Okay. Go. Are you tired of overcomplicated recipes of beer and tacos on YouTube? <laughs> Pointing, right? Yeah, keep pointing and then stop pointing. Okay. Go. It's waiting for the weekend. <laughs> Go. Well, I'm here to tell you that there's a light at an end of the tunnel. It's the easiest period that going. I present to you. Uh, nice.